Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second presentation in our County Parks feature series. Uh, this evening, we'll be talking about White Oak and Boyce Parks. I'm Amy Miller, and I'm the Watershed Specialist for the Allegheny County Conservation District. And tonight is the second of four webinars featuring our nine Allegheny County Parks. Uh, the dates of the remaining webinars are on your screen along uh, with the parks that will be featured in those sessions. Each session will introduce the park, uh, discuss their histories, uh, any of those not to be missed features and some recent park improvement projects. This, like all of our webinars, is being recorded so it can be posted on ACCD's website and shared with parks to be viewed later. We'll have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So if you have a question, you can go ahead and type it in the chat box at the bottom center of your screen and either myself or my coworker Rebecca will make sure your question gets asked. With us this evening, we have two of the Allegheny County Park Rangers, Elise and Amanda, and the Allegheny County Park Rangers are the ambassadors of our parks. So they represent the ideas of conservation and stewardship of our natural, cultural, and recreational resources. They also provide park visitors with information and ensure the park's regulations are being followed. Park rangers offer educational and interpretive programming in the parks, as well as at local schools and community events like this presentation this evening. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Elise and Amanda. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Amanda and I'm joined by Elise, like Amy said, and we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, so like Amy said, we're going to be talking about White Oak and Boys Park today um, and kind of what we do as park rangers. So we do a lot of education, um, like Amy mentioned in our mission statement, along with stewardship and customer service patrol. So we're almost always out in the parks, um, walking around, either doing something, improving something, teaching something, or answering something. So we're always out and available for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always flag one of us down and let us know. And you're all also more than welcome to join us on any of our public programming that we have offered throughout the year. We do a lot of different hikes and history and different topics that we cover, which you can find on our website. Um, but other than that, we'll go ahead and go into our parks a little bit. So we have nine total Allegheny County parks that circle um, the county and the idea with the park system was that there would be a park within at least a half hour of everybody regardless of where they lived in Allegheny County and today we're going to be talking about Boyce Park and White Oak Park which are on the right side of the picture. They're some of the easternmost parks that we have. Uh, Boyce Park is in Plum and Monroeville and White Oak Park is near McKeesport. So we're going to start with White Oak. It's one of our regional parks. So when the parks were founded, they had North Park and South Park first as kind of the mothership parks. And then the other seven parks were added later as a regional park system. And White Oak is pretty unique. Um, so it was the land that White Oak is on right now was originally settled as like a block house, they had a fort that they called Fort Reburn and the man who was in charge of it was named Adam Reburn. And it was originally, this fort wasn't necessarily like a war stop or for battle or any strategic location for those matters, but to afford kind of refuge for settlers in the area if there were like raids um, by the Indians that lived in the area or if they needed any safety or protection from different um, threats that would come upon their homesteads. And then after the fort, after the government was done with the fort, um, Adam Reburn lived on the land with his family and they called it Galilee. And so he lived there and throughout time it changed hands a lot. Um, and a lot of these names can be still seen in the area. So. Um, Reburn, then Rollins, then Muse. And so at one point, the main road that runs by the entrance of White Oak Park was called Rollins Road and is now called Muse Lane. 
Um, so you can see the um, main entrance of the park and the park admin office are both on Muse Lane. And this sign that's in the picture is outside the front of the parking lot to the admin office. And along with the admin office, there's also Angora Gardens, which is um, a Manya community services feature. I don't know, like service that they offer. Mm -hmm. And it was originally named because of the Angora rabbits that they raised and grew and they would offer different community services and therapies for people with um, differing abilities and disabilities and that property the Angora Gardens property is in the same place as the John J. Muse house which these are pictures of the Muse house and John J. Muse was the last owner of the property before it transferred to the county and he and his family moved from Virginia. They were abolitionists, so they wanted to free the slaves that their parents had, that their family had, and to ensure their freedom, they brought them with them to Pennsylvania. And John J. News and his wife built the house that is still on the Angora Gardens property and the property of White Oak Park. And because of their abolitionist views, it is believed that their house was a stop on the Underground Railroad and they would throw a quilt over the front railing of their porch if they were available to take in um, people seeking freedom. And it's thought that they had a small kind of hiding spot. So if you look at the picture of the blueprint of the house, it looks like there's a small door near the foundation in the middle of the house. And the little area to the right past the dotted line is thought to be where they would hide um, people seeking freedom. And so that is, I think, one of the cooler parts of the history of White Oak Park because not any of our other parks have something like that to claim um, in that history. And this is what the, the Muse House looks like today and what Angora Gardens looks like today. So they have beautiful flower beds and um, plants outside of the house behind um, the house and on the property and they also have a barn and a greenhouse that you can not only attend programs that Angora Gardens offers but also you can rent it out for like baby showers and bridal showers and birthday parties and things like that. So besides this kind of history behind White Oak, it also has lots to offer via recreation and natural things to see. So the top left corner picture is a picture of the new chestnut playground, which I would say is one of like the more fun ones in the park. Not that I have tested all the playgrounds in all nine parks, but this one is definitely very fun. Um, chestnut shelter is also very popular. It's right next to a creek. And, but we get a lot of people renting shelters, as I'm sure you know, in all the other parks as well. It's a very popular place for graduation parties and picnics and stuff like that. Um, the middle picture is the wedding gardens gazebo. So you can have your wedding ceremony and probably reception there if you wanted to have a park reception. But it has lots of nice planted flowers and it's really beautiful all times of the year. And White Oak is probably one of the coolest parks to go look at trees and plants. There's not a lot of people there. It's really quiet and serene and a great place to escape. There's really, really big trees in the forest and it has great wildflowers and great stream life to look at too. So if our like one must see feature of White Oak Park, if you're going to visit for the day is definitely the trails. There are a lot of trails behind the admin office in the Angora Gardens area that are unblazed. You can really create your own adventure back there. And then there is the white trail on the main part of the park that's by the shelters and things over there that helps you do a whole loop around the whole of White Oak Park. So you can really see everything and it only takes about uh, two hours to hike the whole thing. Next up is Boyce Park, which is one of our regional parks and as Amanda mentioned it is in Plum in Monroeville and Boyce Park is actually named after William D. Boyce who is the founder of the Boy Scouts. So you can see that a lot of the shelters in the park 
have a Boy Scout theme to their naming. And Boys Park has a pretty interesting history as well. The top left-hand picture is of an excavation that happened in the park by the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in 1976. Um, they were developing part of the park and had to have an excavation there and they ended up uncovering um, thousands of artifacts and actually some homes and even possibly a village of the Monongahela people. Um, and it suggested that it could date as far back as the 1300s AD. And then the picture on the bottom left hand side is a picture of the Carpenter Log House, which is on the Boyce Park property. It was built in 1822 and it was owned by Jeremiah Murray, who is actually the founder of Murraysville and Murraysville is named after him. So it was a residence of the Murray slash Carpenter family for 136 years and it was sold to the county in 1958 and became a part of Boyce Park. Um, and it was actually dismantled and rebuilt at Point State Park to celebrate Pittsburgh's history in 1958. Um, and was returned and rebuilt on the property. And it is run by the Allegheny Foothills Society. They restored it in, 19, in 1979 and they still run it today. And um, it's open occasionally for tours and sometimes they even have different small festivals that happen there. And then the picture on the right hand side um, is commemorating Forbes Trail. So General Forbes hiked through the area, walked or marched through the area um, with Colonel James Washington on their way to capture, hopefully capture Fort Duquesne, which they ended up doing. But there is three different signs in the park that show the route that they took, um, which is believed to have gone through Boyce Park during the French and Indian War. And Boyce Park also has a lot of interesting recreational um, and cultural and natural resources. But one of the most important recreational features in all of our parks happens to be at Boyce Park, which is the ski slopes. So we have skiing, snowboarding, and snow tubing normally from about mid-November to mid-March. And we are the only downhill ski area in Allegheny County. So we offer lessons for beginners, um, you know, bunny hills. We have a terrain park for skateboarding. Um, and the left hand side of the of the pictures is actually us using these ski slopes to run snowshoeing lessons. So we are lucky enough to have this feature in our parks and then we are lucky enough as park rangers to be able to use it as well. But Boys Park also has some other recreational features. They have one of the three wave pools in the county parks. That's the picture on the left hand side. The picture on the top right hand is our skate park. And the bottom right hand is an archery range. And we are the only park that has an archery range, although um, there is one possibly soon to be built in another park. And Voice Park also has some very interesting natural features. Um, to the right hand side, the picture shows our trails, although our trails are a wonderful feature in all of our parks. Um, Boys Park also is another park that has some really nice trails that have some different loops. We've been doing a lot of work on the green trail in Boyce to improve it and make it um, a loop around part of the park. But our trails are all multi-use, so hiking, biking, and equestrian. Um, and Boyce Park is definitely another one that offers a large amount of trails that can be explored. In the upper left hand, that picture is a picture of our Boyce Park Indian Hill Meadow. And if you saw our program last week, we talked about some meadows that are being installed in some of our other parks. But this was our first meadow um, that we put in and it was funded by a couple of different organizations, but the Allegheny County Parks Foundation, who we are lucky enough to work with, were the ones who put this together um, and helped create this beautiful meadow at Boyce Park. And we'll talk a little bit about meadows in general um, and the Boyce Park Meadow again in just a little bit. But the bottom left hand picture shows the acid mine drainage ponds at Boyce. And currently Boyce um, is the only park that has these acid mine drainage ponds 
Uh, several of our regional parks were strip mined before they became park property and were transformed um, into the county parks and Boyce Park has some acid mine drainage issues. So these different ponds were installed so the water can go from one pond to another um, and hopefully at the end after they've gone through all of the ponds, uh, the water then is cleaned out from most of that acid mine drainage that is in it. It's kind of a purification system for the water. And if you were at Boys Park, the must see thing that we would suggest um, kind of depends on the season. So if you were there in the late fall or winter, we would definitely say the ski slopes, just because as we said, skiing, snowboarding and snow tubing and the only downhill skiing in Allegheny County. Um, and it's really great that we have this here in the county um, accessible to our county residents. And if you were there in the summer, we would suggest seeing one of our Boys Park Meadows. As I said, this is our first one. The one we are looking at is our Indian Hill Meadow, but we have another meadow that we have also put in on the other side of the park. And although this picture shows some beautiful brown-eyed, black-eyed Susan and Coreopsis, uh, the meadow has really diversified in the different flowers that are growing. So we have those mowed paths and you can walk up and around, you can look at the different flowers and grasses, um, and really look at the different things that are growing in the meadow. You can even see how it acts as habitat to some of the different pollinators or butterflies or birds in the area. So it's a really beautiful feature um, that we were lucky enough to add to the park. And then we are going to go ahead and turn it back over to our friends at the conservation district so we can learn a little bit more about their work in Boyce Park. Thanks, Elise. Uh, so we are going to talk a little bit about those projects that um, Elise mentioned. Just get my screen share back up here. Okay, so Rebecca and I are going to talk about some projects ACCD was involved in in Boyce Park. Uh, I'm going to talk about two projects, the first of which is the AMD treatment system. Uh, and the second uh, is a project that we're going to be installing um, next spring. Um, and it's some stormwater best management practices at the ski lodge. Um, and then finally, Rebecca is going to talk about uh, test your knowledge on environmental skills and talk about Allegheny County's Envirothon, which is uh, held annually at one of the county parks. So Elise mentioned the Boyce Park AMD system. Um, it was completed in 2008. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, abandoned mine drainage, or AMD as it's mostly called, uh, results from water that has been polluted by contact with mines, specifically in Western Pennsylvania, these are coal mines. Uh, the most common form of abandoned mine drainage is acid mine drainage, which is highly acidic water coming from the mines, and they also typically contain dissolved metals like iron uh, and aluminum, uh, which is the case in Boyce Park. Uh, as I mentioned, the system was completed in 2008 to address multiple points of polluted discharge, which we're flowing into Pearson's Run, which is the, the tributary that runs through the park. Um, that tributary flows into Abers Creek, which then flows into Turtle Creek. Uh, the basic premise of treating uh, acid mine drainage is to raise the pH of the water and allow those metals to solidify and settle out prior to returning that clean water back into the stream. So in this system, um, limestone and spent mushroom compost are used to raise the pH of the water and then a series of settling ponds um, drop out those solidified metals and a wetland follows at the end um, before the water, clean water is removed, is, is uh, put back into the stream. So the second project uh, I mentioned is the installation of stormwater best management practices um, at the Four Seasons Lodge or the Ski Lodge. Uh, there are several paved parking lots to accommodate the many park users. Um, 
at the, that utilize the facility and these areas contribute a lot of runoff to storm sewer inlets which ultimately go into Pearson's run as well. Uh, in response to recommendations from the ecological assessment that the Allegheny County Parks Foundation put together, um, the Conservation District submitted a Growing Greener grant proposal last year to install these, these practices. Um, best management practices are structural, vegetative, or managerial practices used to treat, prevent, or reduce water pollution. So next spring, working with county parks, we'll be installing a 900 square foot rain garden. Uh, a rain garden is also called a bioretention area, and it's an excavated uh, shallow surface depression planted with specially selective native vegetation to treat and capture runoff. So this rain garden will store approximately 6,700 gallons of water and runoff flowing into the rain garden will be able to infiltrate into the ground, which will filter out pollutants such as sediment. Uh, we'll also be converting two uh, turf grass, currently grass uh, hillsides into meadows. Um, these hillsides also receive runoff from parking lots, the sidewalk and the road. The established meadow will reduce stormwater runoff, increase infiltration, capture sediment, and filter pollutants. Elise mentioned the Indian Hill Meadow. Uh, Indian Hill is another meadow that was partially funded by the Conservation District. Uh, the new meadow project, although much smaller in scale, will have be similar in appearance. We'll have um, those wildflowers mixed in there. Uh, and we were supposed to, as part of the project, uh, convert part of the parking area to permeable pavers, uh, but we weren't uh, successful in getting the funds to do so. So we'll still be seeking those funds. So I talked a little bit about the stormwater benefits of rain gardens and meadows, but there are other benefits to these BMPs as well, um, such as they make great pollinator habitat, uh, butterflies, moths, bees, other pollinators love rain gardens, love meadows. Um, Pollinators have been in decline across the United States and they're vital to pollinating our own food resources. So it's important that we try to help them out where we can. Uh, rain gardens and meadows also provide shelter and food resources for backyard wildlife, such as songbirds. Um, they reduce the need for weekly mowing. So while they are not maintenance free, there's still some weeding and things like that you have to do they do require less effort than, than mowing and, and keeping your, your grass. Uh, um, and finally, they are just pretty to look at. Um, many rain gardens have a variety of colors uh, that vary seasonally uh, and they can improve the appearance of really any area. So Rebecca is going to talk about uh, Allegheny County's Envirothon and then we'll get to your questions. Good evening. My name is Rebecca and I'm the Envirothon Coordinator at the Allegheny County Conservation District and I'm here to talk about this awesome annual event to spread the word and highlight yet another reason why Allegheny County Parks are great. Envirothon is a high school competition that takes place each year in the spring and it begins at the county level and the winning school proceeds from there all the way to the national competition. There are five topic areas and each year a new current issue is selected. 2020's was water resource management, local resources and local solutions. Envirothon is rotated around Allegheny County Parks to expose students to all of these beautiful places. This is the only academic challenge of its kind. It is a natural resources focused event that challenges students to work together as a team and it is an extracurricular pursuit which means students have to devote time to study and practice on top of their usual school workload and additional experience and preparation for real life after high school. This academic competition is enhanced by our station leaders and supporting volunteers. We are lucky, and I'm including ourselves in addition to the students, to have some real life environmental professionals help with this event. 
including the Allegheny County Park Rangers, the PA Fish and Boat Commission, and the PA Game Commission. So now let's get a taste of a few questions taken straight from past exams. You can feel free to enter your answer in the chat box, and if you're not comfortable with that, it's okay and just answer in your head. Question one, what is the pioneer species that is used for fence posts and moth proof chests? D, Eastern Red Cedar. What is soil bulk density? A, it's used as an indicator of soil compaction. And the final question, what do elk in Western states have? The answer is B, summer and winter ranges. So not every school has Envirothon. It's up to a willing educator to lead the way. Please help to support Envirothon by mentioning it to the students in your life. I'll happy, happily talk to any student or teacher to get them involved. Thanks for playing. And now we will move on to any questions we might have. Um, that was great. So we have a couple questions. Um, how did the new meadow in White Oak on the hill by the dog park work out? So the meadow at White Oak in that location is really beautiful. It's not as vibrantly yellow as the one at Boys Park is, but each of our meadows in all of our parks are slightly different mixes. Some of them are the same, but they can all vary. And so you can go and look. Um, my favorite things to see in that meadow are the bees and the butterflies. There's lots of milkweed and other flowers and as well as grasses. And it's really beautiful to go to on a sunny day because you can see the blue sky and the trees um, along the edges. So it's really, really doing well. That's great. Um, so our next question, um, is, is there a meadow in White Oak Park? Yeah, so there is a meadow. There's actually two meadows. There's a more official, like we installed this meadow by the dog park um, right after you enter the park on the top of the hill to the right. And there's also a more um, natural, it wasn't really seated, meadow behind the admin office off of Muse Lane. Um, and the difference between a rain garden and a meadow, what are necessarily elements for making a rain garden? Um, so I can answer that. Basically the difference between a rain garden and a meadow is while they both infiltrate stormwater, the rain garden has um, a depression in uh, can hold a little bit more water and typically has a structured outlet. Um, so any overflow does still flow into either an underground tank or the storm sewer system. Um, necessary elements of a rain garden are you need to have soils that um, will be able to infiltrate. So basically you need more sandy soils. So you may have to amend soils if you have uh, clay soils um, or in your area. So you'll want to do an infiltration test in those areas to make sure that a rain garden will um, work well there. Uh, so next question. Did you mention that Penn State Master Gardeners are in the process of installing spotted lanternfly circle traps in each of the county parks? We'll be monitoring them and giving out information. So we did not mention, but you might see if you were a frequent visitor to the Allegheny County Parks, that there are some new things up on some of the trees in the parks. 
Um, and it is the Penn State Master Gardeners who are installing these spotted lantern fly traps. Um, you might have heard about spotted lantern fly, but is an, it is an insect that is invasive um, and has kind of been making its way closer to our area. And there have been some um, sightings of it around here. So we are working on monitoring the traps and collecting information. Um, if you happen to see one, they are also in the process of attaching cards that have more information about the spotted lantern fly on them. Um, do you have forest management practices in place to deal with invasive insects, storm damage, and climate change? So we work with a couple of different departments and organizations um, to deal with some different invasive insects, um, storm damage, and things along those lines. So it just kind of depends on uh, exactly what which, which topic we're talking about, just depending to who we are partnering with on that. So the Penn State Master Gardeners and Penn State Extension, we partner with them a lot um, on invasive insects, on some other invasive species in the parks, um, our landscape architect division, as well as Penn State Master Gardeners and the Penn State Extension. Um, and we have different partners across the county, um, like the Allegheny County Conservation District that we work with depending on what it is that we are dealing with in the county parks. And last question I have, is there a long-term plan to preserve the winter sports season in Boyce Park when faced with rising temps due to climate change? Uh, we are actually lucky enough at Boyce Park that we can produce our own snow. So we have someone um, who works here with his team who specifically works on managing the um, ski slopes area and the snow. Um, so there's kind of a certain mathematical calculation of when the temperature and humidity is just right. They will make um, a lot of snow and then work on packing it and grooming it in a way that it will be preserved. So a lot of times um, we'll have snow into the spring months because it has not melted yet. So um, they have been doing a, a really great job of being able to manage that and make sure that we can have snow for our ski season. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat box. Um, so we will wrap it up and thank you all for participating this evening. And we hope to see you next month as we continue our County Parks uh, feature series.